and welcome to another episode of the Influential Nonprofit. I'm your host, Mary Ann Dersh. I work with nonprofit leaders to grow their influence so they can create more income in their nonprofit and more impact in the community because that's what we're all here to do is do more good. And I am with my what colleague, friend, client, wonderful human, Jenny Beatrice today. And Jenny uh, Sisters of St. Joseph of Carondelet. I'm going to tell you all about her uh, in just a minute. Welcome, Jenny. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. We're going to talk about internal and external communications and what it really means to be an authentic communicator in your organization. Because you and I, we've been working, um, well, your organization has been working on this journey and I've been helping you along to really be able to share your message, your true message, and what it kind of really takes to do that. And I think it's more than people think that, oh, if we just had this like perfect tagline or this perfect message, then like it would all be, it would all be better. And I know different and you know different, and that's what we're going to talk about. All right. I'm just going to share that Jenny is a veteran in nonprofit communications. Those are your words, but I am too. <laughs> And you've been with the Sisters of St. Joseph of Carondelet for 16 years. You've done it all because I've done it all to PR campaigns, big picture strategy to making Facebook memes. And you also share your expertise through consulting projects and speaking engagements. And you are a longtime member in the Communicators for Women Religious and a local group here in St. Louis, the nonprofit. Profit Marketers Network, of which I have been involved in, and I was like president of and really involved in many years ago. And currently, your team is striving to be more courageous and authentic in sharing the sisters' message of unifying love, which is much needed in today's divisive world. And ain't that the truth? Welcome, Jenny. Thank you. Thank All you right. very much. Before we start, I always ask the same question first which is tell me something that you're proud of that you don't get to brag about that often. Okay, in 2015, it was the 50th anniversary of Bloody Sunday and the marches in Selma, Alabama for African-American voting rights. And we've had some sisters march in the original marches and one of our sisters was returning for the anniversary and I went along to cover it. Um, professionally, it was a highlight because I picked up the phone and called a reporter I was working with and I said, hey, you want to go to Selma, Alabama? And she uh, got, got approved and we were there for a week long series. So it was very exciting to work with her. But personally, it was such a moving experience um, to be present there and to hear people's stories. And um, I'll just never forget it. So it was a great experience professionally and personally. That's awesome. And I love you're like, hey, just call a reporter. You want to come to Selma? And they're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's always not that easy. It's not that easy all the time. Yeah, but I think, you know, sometimes when it's, I think the point is just asking, you know, just being yes. along for the adventure of, and then being willing to document that experience. And I have to tell you, um, working with the Sisters of St. Joseph Club Carondelet, your sisters are badass. Like these are funny, tough, strong women who are working with the people, the most marginalized and um, the most, you know, neediest among us. And they, they do it every day. And yes. whenever I work with them, I always, I'm always so inspired. And sometimes like sisters and nuns, like, especially in media, they have this, you know, kind of the, an image that is not very accurate because they are smart and like tough. <laughs> they are, you know, sisters traditionally have been the, I'm just going to say this because if you listen to my podcast, you're going to be okay. The shit disturbers of the Catholic church, right? Because they're the ones who push, who push it, who push the agenda. They're the ones who, who create the reform and that's what your sisters do. And, yes. and the, and the thing is, um, sharing that story of who they truly are and what their mission is with your community, with your donor community, with your supporter community, 
that was what we're working on because like you said, to be more courageous and authentic and sharing the sister's message because the sisters are courageous and authentic. Right. And, and like reflecting more of like their true spirit. And I feel like that is what, you know, came through is they're a model for create, for create, uh, you know, for being courageous and authentic. Yes. Yes, very much so. And that is the challenge in communications work here that we have is to really capture that spirit. And like you said, you know, you're going to be shit disturbers. You're going to disturb some people. And we have to be willing to uh, be bold and tell our stories and accept that not everyone is going to agree, but right. we have to be who we are. So let's start, let's start first with why did you all think it was important to be more courageous and authentic in your communications? What was the benefit of that? Well, at this time in the sisters' history, sisters are less present in their ministries, right? They're getting older, but their spirit is strong and their desire to continue this work is strong. So our effort in communications really has to connect with people today. So we wanted to bring out those messages that connect with people on issues and values because they don't know a sister, right? So 30 years ago, 40 years ago, you went to school, sisters were in your classroom, sisters were your principal. You, people had individual relationships with them, but today not so much. So we want to uh, be authentic, bring their personality and their spirit and their message to our communications um, and connect with people on the values. And the way we show that is through how we're working on those issues, working with the marginalized today. And some of those stories are are challenging, but they're important to tell. And we're yes. going to find the right people who, who agree with that message. There's a little bit to unpack there. And there's a lot, because there's a lot underneath that. So first of all, as we all know, our job is not to get people to care about our nonprofit. Our job is to connect with like-minded people. And how we connect with like-minded people is being authentic because being a, that's what people want. There's so much BS in this world. People want authenticity. They want to feel the real thing. But we're often afraid to show that authenticity because it's not for everyone, right? It's, it's not it, like there are going to be people who are like, mm, that's not what I was really looking for, you know? And in the past, and I think in your past, you'd been like, well, let me, let, let's try to like position ourselves in a way that would appeal to you. <laughs> You know, Correct. Like, so, so we can be everything to everyone, you know, because we have so much to offer instead of saying, you know what, that's totally cool because this is truly who we are in that instance, like that drawing the right, right people to you. And that is what can be very powerful in your communications because you're no longer trying to convince people to care. You're just like communicating yes. and saying, this is who we are. If this is for you, come with us. If not, that's totally okay too. And that's, that's a big shift. It is. And we are really willing to take that, take that risk right now. It's important. We've decided to make an effort to do it regardless of the consequence. Now, especially working for the church, sometimes the consequence can be bigger than somebody just sends you an email that they don't like your magazine. Could be even a little bit more, but um, we're still willing to move forward. So right. the sisters are really behind us. It's, yeah, it's and the, really sisters, good time. Uh, the sisters are, you know, they're dealing, they're working with, the immigrants at the border, LGBTQ, like a lot of like marginalized groups that you're right, the church, I don't know, you know, the church is loving that or not. Um, that's what they're, but that's what they're committed to. And you're like, okay, well, if they're committed, then we're committed. And also, but the journey to get there was a little bit unexpected. Um, and I really want to talk about, because being willing to disappoint someone, right, or like not be for someone, that if, if you're a pleaser, that can be really hard. And so no matter what message you get or what you want to send, if internally you're like, oh no, oh no, I couldn't do that. Then that message isn't going to work. So I want to talk a little bit about you specifically, like what you had to do and what individuals inside your organization had to do to be ready to speak authentically, because we have to be authentic first ourselves in order to do that. Yes. So uh, working with you, Marianne, through your course, um, 
I wanted to work on boundaries and people pleasing. So personally, I like to do for people. I like to fix their problems. I like to solve issues. Um, I want to smooth things over or make things happy. I was learning that to be authentic and to be yourself, it's not for everybody. You might disappoint people, but your boundaries are really saying what you are willing to say yes and no to. And I decided what I was willing to say yes and no to. So in my personal life, I've been working on letting things be and not solving everyone's issues. And that has bled over into my professional life. So I am able to um, not solve everything, uh, let things, projects go through, people are working on that. Maybe I think there's an issue, but even if there is, we're gonna learn something from it. It's the, it's the reality. So I'm doing, um, I feel good about some of the choices that I'm making today, I feel like. Yay! I'm proud of myself there. <laughs> So it's work, it's bleeding over into this messaging project because I am leading the project uh, willing to disappoint people, willing to say, this is who we are and what we believe, and everyone is not going to like it, but there are lots of people who will. So that's who we want to connect with. I think that energy impacts the team that I'm working with because we have the confidence to move forward. So, right. I um, so mm -hmm. I want to go back to something you said, because a lot of us are nonprofit. We're helpers. We're pleasers. We want to fix things. And it's not that you don't want to be helpful. That's not it. It's just when, you know, what, what you were working on is not just fixing things for people. Right. And really letting, because you wanted everything. You said, you said, yourself, smooth it over, make everybody comfortable. And in your personal ability to be able to not fix it, live in a little bit of discomfort, right? Have the, um, have, you know, like instead of fixing it, you can say, well, I can help you fix it. I'm happy to support you. Right. I'm, I'm not going to, First of all, it's so freeing because you don't have to fix other people. I have to stuff. do everything. It's Woo! amazing. My to do yeah. list really went went down. Yes, it's only my stuff. Yeah. And second, you realize people can actually fix their own stuff, and you're giving them the opportunity to do that. But it takes you to be a little uncomfortable at first, like, um, and learning a new way of operating. But that new way of operating then allowed you to and take that out into the broader world and say hey this is who we are and and you know and here's the thing if there are people who have been you know part of your organization or are loyal to your organization for a long time who may not love the direction it's moving in mm -hmm. right and and part of what we worked on and what i love about your organization so much is like we loved and respected them for that. And that's okay. And it wasn't like we were trying to fix their disappointment, but just to empathize and say, yeah, I under, I, I understand. And that, um, and I feel like what we're conditioned to do is, oh my gosh, they're disappointed. We can say, oh no, we're not really like that. Or, but we also do this. And mm -hmm. instead of just saying, yeah, I, I, I can, I can see that we may not be the fit for you anymore. Um, so what did it feel like to kind of do that and, you know, process that? Cause I do feel like that's a big fear that people have, like, we're going to make somebody upset and that is not okay. Well, let me give you the example of what we did our first effort into being courageous and how it went. So one of our sisters is in a ministry where she works with parents and children who are transgender. Um, she builds very strong relationships with the families and um, she just accompanies them on their journey. So we decided to do a lead story on this ministry in our Donors and Friends magazine um, in June. It was the front cover story uh, called Without Distinction, which is one of the sister sayings, we serve people without distinction. And it told her story. We knew that 
some people were going to be disappointed. They were going to be shocked and they weren't going to like it. But we went for it because it's who we are right now today and it's much needed in the world. This is a service we're providing and it's who we are. So magazine went out while it was at the printer. There were a few nights where I just was in bed thinking, oh, I hope this was the right move. You know, it's just like at, my, at middle of the night, my mind would go to, mm -hmm. to those places. But um, in the light of day, it always looks good. And when the magazine hit people's mailboxes, the overwhelming positive response we got was beautiful. Not only did we get some people who said, thank you for doing that, that was, you know, uh, was wonderful that you did that. I have numerous stories from people who it really personally impacted. One sister told the story about one of her relatives who's the grandmother of someone who's transgender and the article really um, touched her heart and helped her to cope with some of the struggles and challenges she was going through. A colleague I was working with, who I was talking to her on the phone, and I just happened to mention that we were working on being more courageous in our communications, and we did this article, and she said, excuse me, is that sister so-and-so? And I said, yeah, how do you know? She said, I'm in the group, my child is transgender, and we both started crying. Oh. So we're really personally supporting and impacting people through the communications work. I mean, it was one of the most rewarding experiences. Now, did we get any unhappy campers? Yes, there were a few. We got a handful of emails uh, when we sent out our e-blast that linked to the story. We, In fact, we did an entire Pride-centered email. A few people expressed their disappointment. They were articulate in their in their email, it wasn't like all caps. It wasn't in all caps. <laughs> Eight paragraphs, I, single space, yes. all caps, right? Yes. <laughs> but we really appreciated hearing from them and their views. So um, one I responded to, and I thanked them for reaching out and giving us their perspective, and we appreciate it. And, you know, this is an ongoing conversation, and we're glad you've been part of it. And thank you for your support in the past. And farewell. One was a donor that um, our mission advancement office spoke to. Um, but really, except for a handful, I didn't really hear the, the positive response greatly outweighed the negative. Yeah. So it, it was really a shining example of going for it and having to manage the, the results. So um, it really is giving us the confidence to move forward and do more things like this. Right. And, and it was, it's such an amazing thing because again, you know, all of that energy, you know, of, of, of that feedback you're getting of the good work they're doing and what it means to people. And then now your team, right. Your organization is excited because they feel that feedback and that energy that they're getting from people. And then, you know what I mean? And it kind of, it just creates this back and forth in of, or like the symbiotic circle of ener energy, you know, cause the more yes. authentic you are, the more you call people like that to you. And then you create these communities of, you know, where people can see themselves reflected. What my, my colleague, Amy Fazio, her big thing is people come for the cause, but they stay for the community. And when people see themselves reflected and also in our community right now, there are big changes ahead within the Catholic church, as far as they're, sh they're shifting, like their parishes and all of that. And a right. lot of people are feeling like they're don't, they're what they would consider a home base or, or their community is being disrupted. Yes. And we saw opportunity for you, for the sisters to create community for people who we're looking to see their values reflected somewhere. And, and like, though, so it was a good time to say, Hey, if this is you, we're here and we have we're the here. community you may be looking for, Yes, you know, and it, because one of the things you mentioned earlier was you may not, you knew a sister from school, but the sisters may are not in very many schools. Like, how do you, how do you connect with them? Well, like, this is just a perfect example of how. Yes, connecting with people through our values, 
who we are, what we believe in, and inviting people to join us on that journey. Yeah, it's really, an, it is an invitation. Please join us. Um, we are, cause you know, again, if you know me, we don't convince, we don't have to convince, sell, pitch, try to, you know, it's like, Hey, this is who we are. If this is for you, please join us instead of trying to like, well, let me soften the message here to make it palatable for this person. We're, we're, and, and, and I don't, I'm not faulting anybody for doing that. Cause that's what we were taught to do. But underlying all that is like a scarcity mentality, which is I got to hold on to these people because if I let them go, where's the money going to come from? And, right. and, and, but what I'm hearing from you is that's been, a, has had a good impact on you all the way around it. And from don donor wise as well. Yes. Yes. So even though, you know, there was the, the one donor who expressed their surprise at our story, um, it hasn't made a huge impact. I haven't seen a huge negative impact. Hopefully as we see over time, it will generate more support. Yeah. Yeah. And I really want to hone in on this idea of it's we, we, you had to prepare yourself like, right. right. And so we have to communicate effectively internally to be able to do it externally. So you had to prepare yourself to be able to stand in your value, right? Cause that as a person, like, I don't have to fix, I'm standing in your value and what you provide. And then we worked with others on the team to do that too. So that when this came out, it, yes, of course it was scary. Of course, you're going to wake up in the middle of the night. Like what in the heck have I done? <laughs> and then also know that you're on the right path. Like you are on the right path. And for me, the biggest thing was, um, so Jenny took my influence course and, um, a colleague of Jenny, Sarah took my influence course. So they knew all of this. Right. But then when I worked with the organization, what I found is the gap between, like who the sisters really were and how you were telling their story and that there was a boldness to them. What did we say? It was like bold, um, bold, fearless, and fun, bold, fearless, and fun. And it's one of our um, constituents in our focus group was it when you, you asked them to come up with three words that they thought of, she said, bold, bold fearless, fearless, and, and fun. fun. And we just honed in and on were, that. Boom. That was it. It just dropped in hard. That was it. Bold, fearless, and fun. Okay. So we're like, are our communications bold, fearless, and fun? Maybe not as much as they could be. All right. So why is that? What's, what's holding that back from telling that truth from beer, from that bold and fearlessness that the sisters have. And it was like, what if we disappoint somebody? What if people don't give to us anymore? What, and, and those fears are, those concerns are valid and, and completely okay. And also, but if we are going to stand for something, you know, to, and create community that people want to invest in and feel a part of, you know, we have to be willing to like really be authentic and like take that stand. Yes. And that, so for me, it was beautiful to sort of witness the journey that everyone that people went on in order, you know, to, to really um, connect with this. And it's not about, Hey, let's just like, okay, I can come up with some bold and fearless messaging, but it wouldn't have worked. You would have, it, it would have been thwarted at some point. It would have, you would have dropped it, you know, like, it, Oh, I don't know. That's too much. Okay. So then what, what are the barriers to that? And that's, and because we had done the internal work, right. And, and we right. had done the interpersonal communications, that internal work, then we are, we, they were able to do the external work and really let that meet people, right. Like let the rubber meet the road <laughs> because right, right. remember, okay. So Jenny, we're talking about like, we we're all about being bold, fearless and fun. And then it came to like, actually producing something like that like <laughs> oh no because we can talk about it all we want but when it actually like having that and having people meet that and connect with that yes that, I that's think different one of the most important things that we did in both the course and the process with the organization was coming up with belief statements right so if you're going to be authentic be bold, fearless, and fun about who you are. You have to know who you are. And if you are a person or an organization with very loose boundaries, worry about disappointing people, it's hard to separate who you are and what you want. 
for what someone else wants, the lines get blurred because you're unsure. I had to accept that the communications as the leader of the communications efforts, my personal fears can impact the work. So um, coming up with belief statements, both for myself and the exercise we did as a team for who we are really helped us move forward. I mean, something to look at and just to say, are are my behaviors, are my choices matching these beliefs? Right. Um, and so in belief statements are, it's in my book and it's something I use in my course. So when um, part of it is uh, the first part of the course is um, leadership of self and defining who you are as a person as and as a leader. And we develop these belief statements, right? This is, this is what I, it's like, you know, what do we, five to seven, eight statements, like, here's what I believe. I, and this is the, in which we kind of already know, but it's really powerful. Just put it down. This is what I don't fall below, right? This is the floor. This is the standard that I set. And we do this as individuals. And then we did that, you know, within your organization, here's what we believe. And, um, and then, and then, okay. So then are we acting in accordance with our beliefs? And it's, that's an, now that's an easy thing. And it is really, and I'm so glad you brought those up because I've seen it with you, with, with other people who I work with in, in my course, and I've seen it in organizations when, when we define those belief statements, how powerful that can be. And like how unifying that can be like, here's what we believe. And I say that they're around you. You just don't, you're just not, um, it, like they're, they're mostly internalized, right? Like, but was putting them out there. And I love what you said about blurring. Like, it's a little bit blurry. Like, where do I end and you begin? Okay. So like, here it is. This is, this is who I am. And, um, and this is what I stand for. And, um, and I'm so glad that that had meaning for you and was really helpful. It did. And when, when people share their belief statements individually, uh, the experience was so powerful. I mean, we were in tears. It's just taking ownership of who you are and the awareness of that when you say it out loud, it is very strong. Experience. It is. It is. Yeah. It is so strong. In fact, so in my, I'm running a course right now and we're, that's what we're going to be doing tomorrow is okay. doing our belief statements. I get so excited because that's when the group like really comes together. I can see that just the energy shift. And now like, you know, when I do this group coaching, cause I take people, as you know, from all over the country who don't know each other, who work in nonprofits, Canada and the U S and all and pull them together. And when we share our beliefs, like, and I can see the energy shift and people are like, whoa, like I am with amazing, exceptional people because to see, and, and really just to like speak it out loud and have it land and have it be accepted because that's the thing is like, will people accept me for this? You know, will people accept the sisters for their beliefs? Right. And, and if we're afraid, which, and it's okay if we are, if we're afraid, then you might like hold that back, you know, and like not, not say it, but the power comes from the authenticity. Um, all right. Yes. Um, I would love to share a little bit more just about beyond this of what you see as far as your role as communicator, um, in, in nonprofit in general, some of the expertise that you have from been doing this for so long, like how can nonprofits get better at communicating? That's a really broad question, but what do you see? Okay. I would say that oftentimes people put unrealistic expectations on communications. As far as let's make a brochure. Let's just go straight to the end product. If we make a brochure and put it all down and it looks pretty, we've solved our problem. Or, um, you know, really doing the work to address the systemic issues and not look at communications as a way to polish that up, right? So I do feel like it is important for communicators to be in on the ground level of projects, of initiatives, directives, because it will drive our work authentically. It will prevent us from coming in at the end where people have just, just want us to 
make a pretty website, we're all set. You know, really working on the, the mission of our organizations, the message, understanding where people are coming from, then we're able to more authentically create products that are going to connect with people. Um, I feel like it's just a priority to work with your leadership in your organization to um, listen to the constituents, what, where they're at, and pull that all together instead of just focusing on product. I, you know, I worked at 501 Creative for 16 years and um, people would say, if we just had a brochure, if I heard like, if we just had a brochure and so they're like, okay, so what do you want that brochure to do for you? And it's like, solve a lot of problems, but there is no like magic brochure, right? Or beautiful right. website. If we just had this, then everything would be okay. Like, no, communications is an ongoing process. And what I'm hearing you say is like managing those expectations from the beginning Right. Instead of all of these things being developed and like, okay, now share them. Like, okay, whoa, hold on. Um, but the, then you got to back up and back into it and being okay with the foundation. Um, sometimes um, uh, marketing can be in communications when it's done well, looks really easy and looks like effortless. And so when people yes. see communications are like, oh, we, we can't we do that? Not understanding what it took to get to easy and effortless was exactly what you're talking about. Being involved in these conversations from the beginning and understanding like what is the role of communication and you know, you know what I'm, and then building it up like from there it's, there's really no easy and effortless. I mean, it, it, it can look and feel that way, but that was, but there was a lot of deliberate effort that went into that ease and effort, right. what, what we perceive as right. that. I'm experiencing right now, I'm involved with something where the group calls me in the last 15 minutes of the meeting that they've had all day to tell me what I need to email out. That's not crafting communications. Um, really, you have to be part of the conversation in order to, to bring it together. And it's a challenge if you're not at the table. It's a challenge yes. if you're not at the table. It's the difference between like, it's, it's, there, there's a difference between like expertise, which you're sharing, and then a directive like, here, go tell people that anybody can Okay, but don't like, need no, me like, for that. Yeah, right. like, right. like of, of sharing that expertise from the beginning of the project, and that is, I think that is so important. And just for you to be there, just to manage expectations and help people to understand what the role of communications is and what can really do and what it can't do, right from the beginning. All right, anything else you want to share? You know, around communicating. Around communicating, um, I just want to say that it has been a wonderful experience, a journey working with you on this, both personally and professionally. And it has really, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect at all the things, but I'm aware of them. So if I find myself over problem solving for someone, stepping over those boundaries. I pull it back. I, I had a conversation with one of our leaders the other day and she had an issue and I started doing the problem solving and I said out loud, I don't know why I'm problem solving for you. I don't need to do that. And she said, no, no, uh, my family does that all the time. I always tell them to stop. It's no problem. I need your help. But I'm just aware of what I'm doing. And there were a couple of big projects that people suggested to me, and for numerous reasons, they weren't good ideas. And I said, no. And I thought, boy, I hope, I hope my bosses think that was a good idea. And one of my bosses came into me and said at the meeting, the other one said they were proud of me for saying no to the projects. So it's another fear, right? That people are gonna think I have to do everything, but you're creating those boundaries. People know where you stand and they respect you for it. Yep. So um, yeah, I'm seeing the change in myself and that's bleeding over into my work. And um, I hope it makes a difference 
for the mission of the sisters. I really um, am excited to see what we do next. So thank you for bringing us here. You are welcome. And I don't hope, I know it's making a difference. It already is. You're doing the work. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say, you know, one of the reasons I really wanted Jenny to share her story is, you know, they're in there and they're doing the work and they're doing it. And there's no quick fixes. There's no easy answers. It's just being devoted every day to authentic communication. And that's, that's the, that's the only answer. Um, and, and just witnessing your journey and everyone's willingness to participate full out in this process. And Hey, and if you're listening to this and you're like, I want some of that, I want to be able to set boundaries. I, you know, I want to communicate more authentically. I want to, you know, um, understand how to like manage that experience both within myself and in your organization. Um, I am starting a course in October and looking for people to participate. So if you think that could be you, we can have a conversation. You can email me at Marianne at Marianders.com. Um, and I'm happy to talk with you, you know, what it's like to really go on this journey. And it is awesome. And that's exactly why I do this is because of all of my years of communication, you know, cause we, I'm a veteran as well. I was seeing what I was seeing is why communication wasn't working. Why these amazing, like taglines and messages that we would come up with organizations wasn't the quality of the words or the message. It was the in their internal conflict and struggle uh, of being that authentic and bold. And that, and if you're not ready for that, no matter what we create, isn't going to feel right. And so it was a matter of preparing you, you know, to, a, for that ascension. Um, just like you said, the brochure, like you wanted the tool, let, let's make the tool, make it better when really, you know, how much more powerful that brochure will be when it's not made out of like fear, but from, right. from, from possibility and you know what I mean? And, you know, an authenticity and excitement, like, Hey, like what, what, how different the creation of that would be when you've, after you've done all this work. And that's, that's the, that's what I see is like when organizations work with me and they, what they produce is so much more aligned and authentic and, and so much more powerful and, and, and it works, right? Like it's doing the job that it wants to do because they understand what, what it, the role is and, you know, and, um, they've, they, they've just done it. They've done the work and it's, it's amazing. So thank you for sharing your story. All right. One last question. Oh, thank you. Okay. Okay. And this is how we wrap. Okay. You and I, we share a city. So the chances of us being a karaoke together could be pretty high. Um, <laughs> So tell me, um, if we were at karaoke together, I love karaoke. Um, what is your go-to song? One way or another. Oh, I love it. That's a good one. I don't think I've ever heard anyone good say that one. one. Oh, well, we'll have to get on that. I got to see you do that. I, okay. I'm like stands. <laughs> we're going to stands. <laughs> Um, that's an awesome one. Thank you so much. All right, Jenny, thank you for being on thank the influential you. nonprofit. Um, it was great to have you. If you want to learn more about growing your influence, you can go to the influential nonprofit.com and download your up level, your influence starter kit. A lot of the concepts that I share on this podcast, there's a great little ebook called stop sitting back and start making change. Exactly the theme of today, um, about how to be more aligned and authentic in your communications. You can get that there. And if you're interested in talking with me about working together, um, feel free to email me at Marianne at Mariandersh.com. And we can, um, we can just talk about it, see if it's a fit. If not, that's totally okay. It would be great to just meet people who are listening. And that is it for me in this episode of the Influential Nonprofit. <laughs>